Psalms. I'm going to speak today on the Lord is my shepherd, but I just want to start off by just saying this scripture. We all know it so well, but it so blesses me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever, ever, believes in him is not condemned, because he sent his Son into the world, that he may die for our sins that we could have eternal life with him. And the Bible is so clear in this. So that you will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. As Dr. Lockridge would say, I wonder, do you know him? You can tell from how we worship here today, we know him, we love him. We thank God for him. And for about, I don't know, probably a couple of months I've wanted to share something about the Lord is my shepherd. So Father, as we just bow our heads again now, we come before your throne of grace and we thank you for the wonderful way in which you love us, care for us, want the best for us. Lord, thank you we can trust you in any way because you are faithful in all your ways. May your spirit, Lord God, Bring the wholeness of this scripture into our hearts today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to read a bit from um, John's Gospel, chapter 10, and then I'm going to go to uh, Psalm 23. And Jesus is speaking here to people in 10. He says this. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him. Sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out, all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and he will come in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Again he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's us. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father." Jesus used this because in those days, and still are much of the time, sheep are all over the place everywhere. And a shepherd would look after his sheep, come what may. The shepherd would be there very often, 24-7, in the shepherd's hut. And he would be there on the lookout for anything that come to destroy or harm those sheep. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, follow me. 
He was giving us instructions as we read the word, follow me. And as we look at scripture, I wonder how often, by the Holy Spirit, we are led to do what he wants us to do, but I wonder how many times our own minds and our thoughts take over so that we do not do what we should be doing. And I want us today to understand more of what it means to be able to follow the shepherd, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. You see, we're all shepherds to a point. If you have non-Christians or you have Christians with you, life group or whatever it is, you are a shepherd to those people. If you've been a Christian for some time, maybe you need to be a shepherd to those who don't know too much about the Bible and why God loves them and what he's doing for them. So I want this day to be able to come before you and help each one of us to know these words. The Lord is my shepherd. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Now David said this, not me. The Lord is my shepherd. Ask the question, is the Lord your shepherd? Because they follow. He's not a herd where he is at the back. You follow him because he's at the front. You follow him because he has instructed us with his word and with the spirit to do things his way and to do things in his will and not ours. And when I was looking at this in more depth, I thought, my word, how easy it is to go your own way and do things in your own strength. But we, the Lord is our shepherd. Follow him. I can think of many, many ways for all of us, perhaps, where we could do better on our school report. Could, be, could do better. Do you know, a sheep and a shepherd, there is such a closeness with them. Jesus knows us as we come out as his sheep. He knows every one of us. He knows every hair on our head. He's there for us in every way. And just like in the days, they're still the same today. You'd be surprised. I looked in the dictionary to see just what is against sheep even today. And one of the things which will harm sheep is a red wolf, a red wolf, a red fox, a badger, and other things too. There's the eagle will, if you're in Scotland, sometimes they harm sheep. And the other thing they put in here, and I had never ever seen this before, rooks, if they get loads of rooks, they can harm a really baby sheep. And that made me think, we used to go to El Paso in the States, to the Mexican border, and uh, work on the rubbish dumps there. And I can remember when we were walking in the mountains there, and Jim, a friend of ours, he said, you just look here, Terry. He said, that's a wild lion's foot. And I thought, I'm going to look this on Google and just see. And sure enough, there's wild lions in that country, in Texas. And I want to tell you, it says here, don't let your dogs uh, go, you know, put them away in the evenings at night because a lion, lions are found very often wandering through some of the streets in El Paso. And there was one recently. What I'm saying is this. There will always be something or someone to put you off what God wants you to do. Hear me. Our flesh will always want to do opposite to the Spirit. And so today I want to help us. Things are just the same. Do you know when sheep get at a distance to their mother, Nate and I were walking once up at Rutland, and there were all these sheep in this field, and one baby lamb was small enough to get through a little gap about that size. 
But do you know what? It couldn't get back. And the poor mother was running up and down the fence and so was the baby and they just couldn't get back together. And we couldn't get the thing, catch it to put it in. What I'm saying is, God wants us to not be apart from him. He desperately wants to shepherd us because he knows the best for us. I can tell you, we've made quite a few mistakes in our lives. Too probably too many to mention, but but for the grace of God who draws us back. But when you make a mistake, there's consequences to a mistake. And so we need to know and follow him better than we do. Let me say, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he yours? I lack nothing. That's not me saying this, this is David. He lacks, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. When did you last take out maybe half a day or something and just spent it reading the word in prayer, asking the Father what his heart is for you and for me? Just be there and take some time in that pasture and have a good relationship with him. It says in our first reading, because my sheep know my voice. So you will know him if you spend time with him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. How great it is when we can have some time in which to feed on the word of God and know his love and compassion, know his heart for us. And again it says here, he he refreshes My soul. What is your soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And many of that will, many of those things will pull you away from Jesus Christ. Don't let that happen. I ask you in Jesus' name follow, follow the good shepherd. Make the Lord the shepherd of your and my life. He guides us along the right paths. Well, isn't that what we want in life? Don't you and I want to be guided by the Holy Spirit and the Word that the things we keep being pulled up on, we can overcome. We can overcome the giants just like David did because he knew the living God. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He doesn't belong to the living God. It's what he's saying to us today. Put your trust and all your hope in me, for I am the living God. So he guides us along the right paths for his name's sake. He doesn't want us to go wrong. For his name's sake, he wants us to be those people who see and follow him clearly even though we walk through the darkest valley. You've been through some dark times. I know many here have been through incredibly dark times. And those times you think, they never seem to end. It's when you're down, it just seems as if one thing comes after another. It's like being in a really rough sea, and as you come in, a wave crashes you down and you get up. And before you can hardly get up, the next come on comes in. You think, oh, give us a break. If you can just get past that, you can come out of the sea, but very often it's those waves that keep hitting you and hitting you again and again. But God wants to lift you up. He wants to get you through those things. His love is so great for you and I in Jesus Christ that he wants us to see the way through. It says this, though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, because evil is always trying to, to get hold of you. Evil is always there trying to destroy the sheep. That's why the shepherd has to be on the outlook all the time for something which would try and wreck those things. Just remember, because why? Because you will fear no evil. When you get to such a place with Jesus that fear other than him is not on your agenda. What an amazing place to be. Think, I don't have to wake up at three in the morning on a really dark morning 
and think, oh my goodness, what's the next turn I take? How do I get out of this muddle? How can I get free from this? I have an addiction. You probably have never told anyone. There may be people here today with an addiction. How do I get free of this? By making Jesus Christ your shepherd and following him. If you follow heroin, you'll never get out of it up other than for Jesus. I mean that you've got nothing of yourself you can get out of it. Your body will cling for it, it will want it, it will, it will suffer you every step of the way. And there's only one remedy that I really know, and that's Christ in you to enable you and me to get free from anything, and I mean that, anything that would come for you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you want comfort, you need to get to the place where Jesus Christ is your comforter. He tells you the Holy Spirit will be your comforter. He'll be your counselor. He'll be your guide. I just heard John say amen. Do you know when we used to meet in the coffee shop, it just reminded me of this. Bless him. He used to say this in his prayers and this was lovely. God's power is amazing power. Satan's power is powerless power. And when I heard someone say about the power today, I thought, you know, um, he is. Yes, has he got power? Yes, but he's got no teeth. The lion, which is against us, I can tell you, he doesn't have anything like the power of Jesus Christ because he who, in, uh, who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So his rod and his staff, they comfort us. And I'll come back to when you wake up in the night, because so many people do, some, so many people come to eat and I say, it's that restlessness about three in the morning when your mind is going haywire and you kind of think the worst and you don't know what bridge to go over next and everything. And it's so hard, I'm not saying it's easy. No one said become a Christian and it's going to be easy. If they did, they weren't telling you the truth. But I'll tell you what, you'll have a love and a saviour in your life that you never, ever, ever had experienced before. You will know the truth and love what he has for you. He will be your helper and your guide. Hallelujah. He will comfort us. You, protect, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That must be on this earth, because when we get to heaven, we ain't going to have any enemies. What good news is that? What good news is that? God has made a plan for each one of us, and we're going to end up as a family together in heaven and all those worldwide, and we're going to be rejoicing forever and ever what Jesus Christ has done for us. You probably haven't felt like doing cartwheels here this morning, but may your spirit do it for you. Because the flesh is weak, but the spirit will enable you to be set free. Let him prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And the sheep, they used to be anointed with oil sometimes, with oil on their snouts, if you like to put it that way, to stop flies and all these types of things. The shepherd really looked after those sheep. They bandaged them up very often. They did things to help them. They made sure they put on weight. They did everything possible to look after them. Do you know, that's a picture of God and us. He wants to do those things for us every way we turn. He says this, He anoints my head with oil. Listen, my cup overflows. And so many Christians, they're so blooming negative. My cup is half empty. Is it? Bad luck. Because I don't go by luck. My cup overflows. Why? Because it tells me here. My cup overflows. I'd like to see a smile or two that your cup is overflowing. Don't be a miserable cupper. Have a cup that overflows. Pour it in till it overflows. I'm not talking about alcohol, by the way. Till it overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me. Why? Because you're following Christ. 
And they're the things that will flow in your life as you follow Christ. He will help you every step of the way. He will be there for you, but you have to follow him. I think lots of people, they go their own way, and instead of following him, they come to here somewhere and think, where's he got to? Where's Christ gone? I mean, my life is so empty, where is he? Well, he was there, mate. You went off track. You're following your own devices and desires. You're not following him. Make sure you follow him. How do you know if you're following him or not? You know as we read the word, let the word read you. Come on, we really do need to get into this book more and more. I know many of you think he only says that every time he comes up here. And of course he does. Because I know that's where there is a pathway that God will show you through his word to help you and me in these times. The word of God breaks down strongholds, replaces the the supernatural power of God in us and transforms our minds and lives. And it changes eternal destinies. Come on, there's people out there who do not know Jesus. Surely goodness and love will follow you all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to just say to you today, keep following on and on. That's what he said to his disciples. Follow me. And they got their nets and put them down and followed him. Whatever you may be tangled in, God Almighty will set you free. But you want, must want to change. You must want Christ in your life. You must want more and more to know that love Most people, that's what they want is love and that's what God is having for us time and time, day in, day out. Keep on keeping on. Never give up. Just continue and continue to show his love and compassion wherever we go. The word says on your own, you can do nothing. And the word says very clearly, Keep in touch and in line with God. The devil and his desires long to pick you off. That's why we need each other. We need to encourage each other. If you hear someone speaking negatively, tell them, don't say that. Don't say that. It may seem wrong at the time, but it's right. We really do need to know what the, what the word says, and we need to walk in the word, and we need to know, etc., Have we got to be givers yet? We need to give of our time, of our talents, and all that we are. That's what Jesus did. Following him will do that. Winston Churchill said this, We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. I'll just share that. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And I'm not saying this for finances. I'm saying this, let's be givers. Let's give the extra time to someone. Let's give the extra, just as Jesus does to us. Jesus gives us more than what we ever deserve. He died on that cross to set us free. And today, if there's anyone here who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can know him. You can know he's for you not against you. You can know his heart's desire. I I just shared this, and I've probably shared it before, but it just shows how things are. We had a girl in uh, Felixstowe who was a young youth leader. And she was a lovely girl, and she used to bring people around our home, boyfriends this was, and we'd say, not for you, Alison, not for you. Oh, she said after about the fifth one, is there anyone... I'm getting, I'm getting past my sell-by date. And so, so any, she got, I think, to about, I forget what it was, 20, 24, 25? And she said to me, the right one is never coming along. I'm going to have to decide for myself. I said, well, you've, you'll, you need to make a good decision. She did make a good decision. She waited. She was patient. She was waiting for God to have the right person for her. And she married, and she's got four children, And bless her, she's a wonderful mum. She's got a great husband. He's a lovely guy. Why am I saying that? She didn't want to marry the wrong one. 
but she needed some help. We need a shepherd who will help us and guide us every step of the way. Please, as you read that word, Psalm 23, which is probably one of the most read uh, psalms in the Old Testament. Let me say, the Lord is my shepherd. I ask you again, is he? Is he? There's a question mark here. Is he your shepherd? If he is, are you seeking your life to be following him? It says here, I lack nothing. What a place to be. doesn't mean to say you've got everything and everything is going good. It means I lack nothing because he is for me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. What a wonderful thing to have. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul, my, my mind, will and emotions. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I, would you like to just repeat that? Your cup seems to have got broke when the handle's off it and you can't pick it up or something. Say it with me. My cup overflows. Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me and you all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have you heard better news than that today? Come on. Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth. There is no one, no one can get you off his hand. There is no one, no one can take away his love for you, his compassion for you, and his goodness for you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one, no queen, no king, no person at uh, this G meeting, wherever it is going, no one, hear it, no one will come except through Jesus Christ. And that's an open invitation for anyone. Come to me, You're, you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I, says Jesus, will give you rest. Your cup overfloweth. Amen. Amen.